In this video, we're going to talk about the Royal Kludge RK61. This is one of our favorite 60% mechanical keyboards right at around $50. And it has a ton of awesome features that you don't really see in even the higher end 60% boards. Hey guys, this is Betty from Switch and Click, and today we'll be doing an in-depth and very thorough review of the RK61. We have it here with the RK Brown switches, which I think has been a pleasant to type on, but first we'll be going through what's in the box. In the box, you have a white rubberized USB-C cable. It does come with its own Velcro wire management system right here, very convenient. You also have a nice little warranty card here and it does come with one year warranty so if it does break on you, you can contact them and see if they can do anything about it. You get a mechanical keyboard manual here, very convenient and I would definitely recommend taking a look at this because there's some really cool features here that you need the manual to sort of understand. And of course you have the keyboard itself. So in the box, there's not a ton of stuff. I just realized while putting my board back in the box that this bad boy was hidden in there. So it does come with a wire keycap puller. It's very nice. It's actually got a really long handle compared to other keycap pullers that we've used. So it won't scratch up your keycap. All right, so moving on to the build quality. As always, we like to start with the back side. On the back, you see that it's a really simple case. It's all plastic. There are four rubber feet here and there are no kickstands. So if you like don't like the angle that it's at, pretty much out of luck here. You can put something behind it or something to prop it up, maybe buy some rubber bump ons, things like that. But the angle of the keyboard itself is already pretty good, pretty decent. And I find myself not really needing it to go any steeper. You also see that it does have an on off button back here because this keyboard does have Bluetooth wireless capabilities. And we'll be talking about that later on as well. The keyboard has no flex. It's quite sturdy and it does come with a white metal back plate so that the lights shine through really nicely. Oh, and I forgot to mention, we have a version with only the cool ice or light blue lighting. So it has a lot of different effects with that specific color, but they also sell an RGB version for about the same price. I just wish we knew about it so that we could have some interesting colors, but no, we got, we got this blue one, which is fine with me since even with RGB, I tend to stay on the white static lighting anyways. I'm boring like that. It just is what it is. As for the keycaps, they are ABS plastic. They're quite smooth to the touch and there is some texture in there as well. Although they will accumulate some kind of shine over time and long periods of use, you can always replace these keycaps out because it is a standard 60% layout. But so far with some of the use that I've put onto it, it's been fine. It, they are double shot to let the light shine through so the legends aren't going to fade. The only thing I'm concerned about is the feel of the keycaps after maybe a year of use. So one really nice thing about these keycaps and the legends is that usually on budget boards, I see some kind of like stenographic separated legends. On this keyboard, it's really clean. All the legends are closed. They look very professional. The modifiers like spell out the words and it looks really good. I have definitely no complaints about that. There, there are sub legends and the sub legends are laser etch so over time maybe the sub legends might disappear but i mean if they do by that time you should probably have the sub legends and the secondary function sort of memorized by then so these keycaps are clean for a budget they're one of the best abs plastic keycaps that i've seen super nice they're smooth there's a little bit of a matte feel to them but overall they're really smooth. And the keyboard does come in either white, which is the color that we got, or a black, which is, well, you can find that online. The switches that it comes with are Royal Clutch switches. Now I'm not sure exactly what switch manufacturer they use to make these switches, but these brown switches feel very similar to Garon Browns. There is a bump there, and I find myself not really bottoming out when I type but the bump isn't super pronounced either. 
I would say if you do a side-by-side -side comparison, they are slightly more tactile than Gatteron Browns. However, they're not as tactile as Odemu Browns. So sort of somewhere in between. They're also relatively smooth and they're nice to use. It's also available in either Royal Pledge Red or Blue as well if you're interested in linear or clicky switches. Alongside this, it's not hot swappable, so don't try pulling these switches out of your keyboard. They'll probably just break them or break your switch puller. So the first time that I tried this board, I actually didn't know they were tactile because I type with a lot of force on my fingers and a lot of speed. I just thought they were linears at first because the bump wasn't super pronounced, but I had to get a good look at the box to even notice that they were browns. But when you slow down your typing and you're not pushing as hard as I do, then yeah, they're definitely tactile and the bump is there. My typos on this thing is really, really, really low and it feels good to type on. The stabilizers feel very good. The small keys such as backspace, enter, the shifts on both sides. They sound really nice. The spacebar is the only key with a little bit of noise, but I'm sure with some kind of sound dampening foam in there, it'll sound a lot better. And they are pre-lubed from the factory. They're lubed nicely and adequately. It's on the wire, not just big globs everywhere. But if you do have a desoldering pump or something like that, you know, I recommend modding the stabilizer, clipping them and see what you can get out of it. Because for a $50 board, this thing can probably go a really long way if you're willing to put in the effort. So the stabilizers themselves are cherry style. They are plate mounted and they are white. Um, I don't know if they did that to match the keyboard. Maybe the stabilizers on the black version are black. Who knows? That would be sort of cool, like a mix and match kind of thing. For a $50 board though, I really didn't expect the stabilizers to even come lubed, but they are and they're lubed adequately. So. I am really impressed so far with the RK61. Now onto the fun stuff. There are actually a lot of additional features here. First, we're gonna talk about the Bluetooth. All right, so the Bluetooth on their description says that it's low latency Bluetooth, but they don't really specify what the version of the Bluetooth is. I'm assuming it's not 5.1 because it's sort of an older keyboard and it came out several years ago. However, they have updated it over the years but still since they're not advertising 5.1 i'm gonna assume that it's not 5.1 but connecting is super easy you just flip on the switch on the back and then you'll see the lights come on and then to connect you hold fn which is all the way in the right bottom corner which is my favorite location for the fn key and then you either hold q w or e for a while until it blinks and then you just connect on your device. So connecting is super fast. It can switch between three devices pretty easily. And that's it for Bluetooth. The Bluetooth is great. Honestly, for a keyboard that's 50 bucks, like wireless, that's awesome. Although it is Bluetooth, so I'm not gonna recommend doing that for gaming. Definitely connect it. And the USB-C port is right here in the middle. Some people don't like that it's in the middle. I think it looks quite nice being in the middle, but it is a more of a charging port. But if your computer's on the left or the right, it's gonna work out without having too many difficulties there. And it does go to sleep. When it goes to sleep, the lights turn completely off, but to turn it back on, just press one of the keys and it'll reconnect again. Onto the next feature, which is actually one of my favorites about this board, and that is the arrow key function. So to turn that on in the updated version, you press FN and enter. And what that does is that it'll bring the arrow keys on the secondary layer to the first layer, and then it'll bring those things to the next layer. So for example, let's say I turn on arrow key function. Now my arrow keys act as arrow keys. However, to hit forward slash or question mark, I'm gonna to have to hold FN and press that key to access forward slash, and I'm going to have to hold FN and shift to access the question mark. So, but the arrow keys are on the first row. So that's really convenient for that unless you're doing a lot of typing where you're doing a lot of forward slashing or question marking, which is pretty rare for most people, I would assume. But you can also turn that back off and then switch 
it back to its normal functions. Another function it could do is it can bring the function row to the primary layer and you do that by pressing FN and the left control. So that's one mode there. If you press that again, then you can turn on the, I guess the nine block, nine key area on the right side of the board for print screen, scroll lock, pause, insert home, page up, delete, end, and page down. And that'll bring those to the top layer, whereas the Y, U, I, H, J, K, N, M will be brought down. And then if you press FN and left control again, then everything is back to normal. So those different modes are all really great depending on what you are using it for. For example, if you're programming and you're refreshing and you're using your console a lot, then maybe the function row can be brought up. If you're doing video editing and you use delete, insert, and all that stuff, then maybe that second mode will be better. And if you're just normally gaming or typing, then, you know, just do it normally. So very cool feature, something that I haven't seen in any other board. The only thing that's been sort of remotely close has been the Anpro 2 with their tap arrow function, which is cool too. But I like that this is, you know, the arrow keys are going to happen rather than like guessing how long you're holding it for. At first, I just thought it was broken because <laughs> I kept trying to do forward slash, but it kept going up and I was like, what's going on? So I read the manual, so that's what the manual's for. Definitely consult the manual and it'll tell you exactly what it's doing. Other features are Windows lock. Press FN and Windows and it'll do Windows lock. So when you're gaming or something and you accidentally press Windows, you don't need to worry about it opening up the menu or anything. And this keyboard does have backlight and effects. I like the cool blue ice, whatever they want to call it. The effects are like static, reactive, the wave one, this wave one, and I guess like rainbow raindrops one. They're very simple effects. I don't use any of them. I just use static. With the RGB one, I'm sure you get a lot more stuff going on. So yeah, I mean, for $50, there's not much to complain about here. There's a lot of praise for this board. I really like it. I really recommend it. It's probably one of the best mechanical 60% at its price point. You can compare it to the GK61, but that's optical, which is different. So I think this, this thing has its own place in the 60% world really love it if you're looking for a budget keyboard you definitely won't go wrong with this board one of its competitors that we also reviewed is the blitzwolf bwkb1 which also has bluetooth and it also has gateron switches and it also has like dedicated arrow keys so that's a little bit different but they're very similar it also has really nice stabilizers also 50 bucks so you can check those two out but if you're also interested in checking out other 60% boards that are categorized by price range and you want to find the best of the best, check out our best 60% keyboards of 2020 video right here. I'll link that. Made that recently. Very in-depth, thorough video, and it'll probably help you decide on what 60% keyboard you should get. 
As for the verdict on this one, it's $50, it's super affordable. It has amazing features that even nicer boards don't have. I could use this if I wanted to because arrow keys are super easy access. However, I am a 65% person, so don't expect me to switch to this anytime soon. I like it though. It really is one of the best mechanical keyboards you can get at this price point. All right, I hope this video helped you out. It's a relatively simple, very straightforward board. Not a ton of stuff to talk about, but it has really cool features with the different layers and stuff. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.